in today's video, I'm going to go over some basic things uh, that I haven't covered in other videos. Small things that make a big difference. As you see here, I have a correct sentence structure claim. I'm going to do a couple things with this to illustrate some grammar mechanics. So we start out with a cause. For is the cause of this claim. Of is the concern of the claim. We have our two points because you need two points with which to draw a straight line. This point is the for. This point is the of. Now we can drop our verb of the thinking in to move on to our possessive and our next concern in the claim. So you have cause, concern, and now we can put our verb of the thinking in here. Is the verb of the thinking going to be plural or singular? The plurality or singularity of a verb is entirely contingent upon the plurality or singularity of the fact in the cause section of the claim, not the concern, the cause. So therefore we have a singular word claim. So the verb is going to be is, singular. Because there are two verbs in the language, is singular and are plural. So now we move into the possessive of the claim with the certification, and then we have another concern because of is the concern positional of the testimony with the sensation and with the cognition. This is a possessive. Possessive of the testimony, which is the concern of the certification. And the authority is by the claimant's party. The authority positional is by. So you have for cause of concern, of concern, with possessive, with possessive, with possessive, connected by a conjunction, and in the authority, which is by. There's a couple different ways that you can write this part, with the sensation and with the cognition, rather than writing out this positional and lodial with the, you could actually write it out like this. which says the same thing, with the sensation and with the cognition. You can simplify it even further and write with the sensation and cognition, which would be using the syntax key 56707, and then by the claimant parties. As you notice, I've written this in all capital letters. I've seen this come up again and again on the internet where people get into arguments and they, they will say, well, in this styles manual, it says that, you know, on page 666, it says that this is um, donkey Latin or pig Latin or whatever. Here's the thing. If this were in fiction, then yes, that might be true because Whoever is saying that a fiction styles manual is designating all capital letters as pig or dog or donkey Latin, Latin is giving jurisdiction to their grammar to this fiction styles manual. Meaning the person making that claim does not have jurisdiction over their grammar. They're giving jurisdiction to the fiction. That's not how it works with correct sentence structure. I give closure as to the reason why I use capital letters in my dictionary, in my styles manual, which is correct sentence structure. I don't give jurisdiction to the fiction. I take jurisdiction through my own knowledge as authority with my own dictionary. And there are several different reasons why I use capital letters. 
One of them being, it's just easier to write out, type out a, a contract in all capital letters. And it means shout. It's a command. It can mean that as well. And it can also have some maritime connotations. Because we are all in a sea of space. Whether you're on the land or you're on the water, you're still in a sea of space. So that's my closure on that. Now, for those of you out there who want to give uh, authority to your grammar to a fiction styles manual, you're more than welcome to do that. However, I do not participate with that. So, the other thing having to do with the styles manual is this. It's also been claimed that underlining a compound fact is boxing it. Again, giving closure to it from a fiction styles manual. That's not what it means in quantum grammar in my construct, from my dictionary, from my styles manual. Underlining a compound fact just means that this fact and this fact are coming together. They're to be taken as a whole. Whatever is being underlined is to be taken as a whole, one thing. In other words, this would be a five, six, seven. Again, if you want to give jurisdiction to the fiction over your grammar and say that that's boxing, that's up to you. But you and I probably will not be contracting anytime in the near future. So to go back into this now, we're going to talk about more about the plurality and singularity of the verb. What if we say for the claims of the claims? Now we have a plural verb because the cause fact is plural. And now we can talk about the apostrophe. An apostrophe denotes possessiveness. So the claimants, and that's singular, claimants knowledge. It's the claimants knowledge. The claimant uh, possesses the knowledge. If you want more than one claimant, then you would put the apostrophe after the S. Now it's more than one claim. So for the claims of the claimant's knowledge, so you have claimants possessing the knowledge. Oh, here's another interesting thing. So now we have for the claimant's knowledge of the claims are Claimants' knowledge, now we have the plural claimants possessing knowledge. This is singular. It's not knowledge as, it's knowledge. It's a singular condition of state. Therefore, the verb would be is. The claimants' knowledge of the claim is, with the certification of the testimony, with the sensation and cognition by the claimant parties. Backwards, for the claimant's parties. Now, this becomes the cause. And what is it concerned with? Of the sensation and cognition. Now we drop our verb in. But guess what? Going backwards, we have a plural cause. So now the verb becomes are. Are, with the testimony of the certification, with the claims, by the claimant's knowledge. Period. So we've covered apostrophe, we've covered compound fact, which would be hyphenated, which brings two sevens together to form one seven. We've gone over the sequencing, cause, concern, verb, possessive, concern, possessive, authority. We've gone over conjunction mechanics and the verb mechanics. So I think that about covers the little little basic tidbits that I may or may not have gone into detail about in the past. 
Hope you found this useful. If you have any questions about the grammar here, feel free to reach out to me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. Thank you very much for watching.